Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So in uh, this video, I just want to show you how you can configure OSPF on Aruba router. So let's see what is our scenario. The scenario is as the following. We have router 1 and router 2 that are connected to each other via the interface 1 slash 1 slash 1 on both sides. And I have already put the IP addresses 192.168.12.1 from this side and .2 from the other side. Now, we have here the network 10.0.0.1 and here we have the network 172.16.0.1. So I have already put the IP addresses. Those are loopback interfaces representing a LAN network. Now, the idea is that I don't want to use any static route. I just want to configure the dynamic route, which is OSPF. So at the end, this network can reach to that network and this network can reach to the other network. So we are going to use OSPF. I'm going to show you how you can configure OSPF on Aruba routers. At this moment, I only have IP address set on the graph, as you can see here. So uh, let's try first to check if we have reachability between router 1 and router 2 on those IP addresses. Let's go directly to router 1 and I will try to ping to 192.168.12.2, which is the other side. And as you can see, it's reachable. Now, if I try to ping, to 172.16.0.1, yeah, that's uh, the the network from the other side. You can see that uh, this is not reachable. And uh, if you look here, this one is the one that I'm trying to ping to it, 172.16.0.1. And if you want, I can show you on uh, the router too. If I do show IP interface brief, we can see that this is over there, but he can't reach it. Also, router 2, if you try to ping, let me show you, we have another IP, which is the LAN from router 1, which is 10.0.0.1. If I try to ping it, 10.0.0.1, it's not reachable because there is no route. So this router, if I look to his routing table, he doesn't know anything how to reach to 10.0.0 network. You see, he doesn't have any entry on his routing table. So for this reason, we need to make the route. You could make the static route. I have a video showing how to do that. If you want, you can go to it and check it. But I just want to show you in this video how you can do using the OSPF. All right, very good. So let's go directly and start configuring OSPF on router one. So I'm not going to explain what is OSPF. If you want, I have some other courses speaking about OSPF. I'm going to show you how you can configure it. So we go to the configure terminal and from here I have to say I want to use OSPF. To say that I have to say router and if you use question mark you can see I can use BGP, OSPF, OSPF version 3 which is for IP version 6, PIM and PIM version 6 that's for multicast. We can use VRRP but in my case I want to use OSPF and we will give it a process ID. You can choose any process ID. This is the process ID for the processor that is going to use for it the OSPF. So I'm going to use one. So router OSPF one. Now, if I make question mark, you have different information here. So what I want to do is to give it a router ID. A router ID is nothing more than is like the identifier for the OSPF. You have to think it's like the name of the router inside OSPF process. So I'm going to check or put router ID 1.1.1.1 as being router 1, so I'm going to use 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. All right, very good. Now, this is the area, so we have to say that this is going to be inside the backbone area, which is area 0. So that's it from this level. Now I need to go to each of these interfaces. So on router 1, I have to go to this interface and to this interface, and I have to tell them that they are going to be published inside OSPF. So how to do that? I will go from here to the interface 1 slash 1 slash 1 and I have to say IP OSPF 1 area 0. So this interface is inside OSPF on area 0. Then I will go to the interface loopback 0 and I will say IP OSPF 1 area 0. And that's it. That's all I need to do from router 1. We should do the same on router 2. So this is router 2. I will go to the terminal here. And first I have to configure OSPF process. So I have to say here, router OSPF 1. And I give router ID in this case is going to be 
You can choose whatever you want, but I'm just making it easy. So router one is one dot one dot one dot one router two two dot two dot two dot two, and then over here I have to say that this area zero. Then I have to go to the interfaces. If you want, I can just do here show IP interface a brief to know what are the interfaces that we need to publish. So you see we have one slash one slash one and loopback zero. So now I have to go to the interface one slash one slash one and I have to say IP OS PF one area zero. Then I'll go to the interface loopback zero IP OS PF one area zero. And that's it. So now we have configured our SPF and what's going to happen if we go back to the picture that this router and this router will send to each other hello package, they will form neighborship and then this router will tell router 2, hey router 2, you know that I have this network connected to me and this network connected to me and he will send it as an LSA to router 2. Router 2 from his side he will say, okay, I know that router 1 is connected to this network but this network is connected already to me, so yeah, I don't really need that update. But you said you have this network 10.0.0.1 or the zero connected to you. I don't know about it. All right, let me just put it inside my routing table. Same router two say for router one, I have this network, I have this network, router one will receive it. Then you say this network, I know it, so it's not important for me, but that network, I didn't know it, I will put it inside my routing table. And that's how router one will know about that network and router two will know about this network. Let's justify that to see if this is correct. So let's go to router one, let's clear everything. And from here, the first thing I want to see if they form neighborship. So I can say show IP or SPF neighbor. You can see that router one has already formed neighborship with 2.2.2.2. So this is uh, form. Of course, there is the DR and BDR. I'm not gonna speak about it because this is out of uh, scope of uh, this lecture. This is more to be on an OSPF course. And uh, let's check on router two. And also on router two, if I say show IP OSPF neighbor, you can see it's forming neighbor with 1.1.1.1. So this is the router ID, remember when we put it. So it's like the name of the router on the OSPF process. So he has that and it is full, so the neighborship is there. Let's check now if uh, if we go to router one again and I, if I do show IP route. So look, router one knows now about 172.16.0.1. He knows about it. And router two should know about 10, show IP route 10.0.0.1. Look, he knows about it. And how does he know it from OSPF, you see? And uh, this is what we call the administrative distance, which is 110. So, so far, so good. Everything looks fine. I want to show you one more uh, comment that you can do also. So you can say show IP uh, OSPF and then over here, uh, we show the neighbor. We can also see if you want the route. Let's check the route. So it will show me what are the routes that are learned from OSPF. So here you can see that this is uh, 10, that is 172, and that is the link 192.168.12. And that is the uh, administrative distance, which is 110, and the cost is 100. Very good. And then there is a nice comment that I like to use it, which is uh, we will see that it's show IP um, or SPF interface brief. So let's do it. Show IP or SPF interface brief. So this will give you a brief idea about the uh, interfaces that uh, are being published on OSPF. So, so far so good. Now let's do the experiment to check if router one can reach now uh, the network of router two. So I have to say ping to 172.16.0.1 from 10.0.0.1. So the ping is coming. If we go back to the picture, the ping is coming from this IP to that IP to check if it's going to work. So let's try and enter. And here we go. It is working. Let's go to router 2 now. And also I want to do ping, but this time to 10.0.0.1 from 172.16.0.1. And it is working. So this is what I wanted to show you in this video. It's uh, how you can configure OSPF on Aruba. Of course, there are much more topics to speak about OSPF. If you want to know about it, uh, I will uh, do some other videos uh, on YouTube, but also I may do a course speaking about uh, the 
for all routing that you can do on Aruba. So I hope that this video was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming video.